Hi, Gabriel here, SEO manager at Hike SEO. In this video, we'll be talking about website crawling and how to make your website more crawlable. So what you'll learn in this video, basically what website crawling is all about, examples of different types of web crawlers, how they actually work, two different types of crawls, both in general and more specific to Google, controlling bots, how to make sure that they go to the right places on your site, how to stop them from visiting certain areas of your site, the differences between crawling and scraping, and finally, how to optimize your website for easier crawling so that it's easily discoverable. What is website crawling? You might have heard the term before, you might have heard different terms. Basically, in summary, it's the automated process of systematically browsing and downloading content from website pages for the purpose of indexing and analyzing that website's content. What is a website crawler? You might not have heard this term before, but it's also known as a web crawler, a bot, a spider, or any combination of those, a web bot, a web spider, whatnot. And it's basically a software program that's written to visit websites and follow the links to various pages on that site. It's like crawling around the site, discovering new content pieces, new pages that have been written, and using those. So it extracts information from those pages that it downloads, and then builds an index from those of the website's content. It prioritizes those pages based on hundreds of different factors. And in that index, it will then um, use what people search in the search engines, match it with the right piece of content, and then rank those pages in the search results. And that's what forms what we use today as the search engine. So indexing is an integral part to the whole search engine process. And web crawling is the first step to that. So examples of different web crawlers online, you got Googlebot, you got Amazon Bot, you got Bing Bot, Yahoo Slurp, you got DuckDuckBot for the DuckDuckGo um, browser, you got Yandex Bot, Baidu also has a web crawler, and there's many others out there as well. How do web crawlers actually work. Now, without going into too much technical details, I'm going to keep it really high level here. It basically, web crawlers start out with what they already have in their index. So a single link, um, a set of URLs, or a or a domain that they found online somewhere that they already have. And that's where they have to start from. Because without that, they don't know what they don't know. So they have to start with something. And then on those on that page or those pages or that domain, they'll start discovering additional links on those pages and they'll add that basically to the queue for additional crawling to discover what's on those pages and so forth and so forth. Now, it's important to note that not all links are crawled. Many are ignored for different reasons, uh, depending on priority of the crawling, the site size, um, the speed of the site, there's so many different factors. So not every single page is crawled, um, but a majority are. And basically it's the policies of these search engines, of these software programs that decide which pages are crawled in what order and how often uh, they're recrawled as well. So three areas that crawlers actually check on a site. Firstly, they'll go to the robots txt file. So this is a file that should be on every website. And basically it lives on a website server. It's, it's a plain text file. And it specifies the rules for the bot, what they can do, what they can't do, how often they can do what they do. And it basically shows allowed, the, allowed pages, directories that they can crawl through, um, how quickly they can crawl through them which bots specifically are allowed, and also what pages and directories they can't touch, they can't crawl. Um, so it detects all of that. The second one is the robots meta tag. So this is located in the head section of an HTML page and informs the crawlers not to follow any of the links on that page. So let's say you have a page and you don't want them to crawl through any of the links there. 
then basically you need to specify that in the robots meta tag. So this is how it looks. So meta name equals robots, content equals no follow. So the no follow directive basically says don't follow any of the links on this page. The third area is link attributes. So these are basically within each link and they contain a no follow attribute, which basically says don't follow this specific link. All links uh, are follow by default unless otherwise specified. For example, here, this link has a no follow attribute. So it means it tells the bots don't follow through, don't go to this uh, specific page. Now, there are two types of crawls in general. The first one is site crawls. Basically, this means the entire website is crawled from top to bottom until all links have been exhausted. This is also known as spidering. And then there's page crawls. Basically, these are a single URL that is crawled. Now, more specifically, for Google crawls, there are two types. First, first type is discovery phase. And this is where the Google bot discovers new web, web pages to add to its index. And the second one is refresh, where it basically updates it's indexed by finding new changes on the web pages that it already has in its index. So why are they called spiders? Well, you probably figured that on out already, but basically crawling implies a creature, anything that crawls around. Um, also, the www, World Wide Web. So spiders have webs. That's another reference. So spiders basically crawl all over their web, spin and expand their web. That's basically what web crawlers do or spiders do. Um, there we go. Controlling spiders on your website. How do you, you dictate where you want them to go, how often you want them to crawl, all of these things. Basically, the first area is the no index attribute. So, for example, let's say you don't want some web crawler on a, don't want it to index it in the search engines for a specific page. So you put this attribute in that page and basically tells the robots, do not index this in the search engines. Another one is the disallow directive. And this goes in the robots.txt file. And this is the text you would add there. So user agent basically is the type of bot and the asterisk marks that this applies to any search engine, Google, any search engine web crawler. And the disallow directive basically says, do not um, crawl or do not, yeah, basically do not crawl this page um, or this, this directory. In this case, it's a directory um, and you can add asterisks as well if you don't want it to go to pages below that directory, all of that. So it's very flexible, uh, it's very nimble, and you can also restrict access to other crawlers and other bots out there. Now, what's the difference between crawling and scraping? So scraping, it basically, uh, there's no, per you don't have permission, so they, they basically go on your site without your permission, they ignore no follow, they ignore the rules, and generally used illegally or for dubious means. For crawling, um, you give permission to those crawlers. Um, they respect the no follows. They respect the rules that you set in your robots.txt file and throughout the pages of your site. And they're used legitimately. So how do you optimize your website for crawling so that web spiders can discover your pages and check if there's any new pages that you create. Basically, first one is to use a sitemap and this lists all the pages on your website. That's what the purpose of a sitemap is. It's a map for your site and it makes it easier for search engines to find and index your content. And in generally, it should be an XML format, although it can also, you can also have an HTML sitemap that's on your page that's more for users, but Search engines can also crawl those, but ideally it's XML. And in general, if you have a CMS, these generally have sitemap ability and auto update them whenever you add pages, remove pages or update pages. However, if you're using custom coded website, just make sure 
that your sitemap is always up to date whenever your, your pages are um, new pages are added, pages are removed or updated. Another thing to optimize is improving your website speed. Now this is very important because crawlers generally have a cutoff time as as to how long they wait before a website a website page loads to crawl it. If it's too long, it will skip it, go to the next page. Another way is to use internal linking. And basically this is where pages on your website, you link between them logically based on similar topics. This helps users discover new topics, new pages, but also web crawlers to figure out what each page is about, how they relate to each other, and to crawl and discover these new pages. So no page should be orphaned, meaning alone and not linked to. So you should always link to new pages. Go back to your old content, old pages, and link and go through the content and see how you can link to these new pages. That really, really helps with crawlability. If you can, if your page, uh, your website is, you know, hierarchy has different levels, add breadcrumbs, meaning they're basically hierarchical links that uh, allows both users to navigate through your structure, but also help uh, web crawlers to discover those pages. So if you have a deeper hierarchy, make sure you link up. Um, meaning to the parent pages or down to the children pages or cross um, across pages on the same hierarchical level. And I would say a rule of thumb would be about two to three links pointing to other relevant pages. Uh, that's a good amount. If you have more, that's fine. Depending on the length of the content, you might have a lot more. If it's a very short piece of content, you might just have one, two, maximum three lengths. So that's fine. Configure your robots.txt file. Um, you want to have it point to your XML sitemap on there. And also make sure it doesn't block any unintended pages or directories from being crawled. So just check that first. And yeah, that's it for website crawling. If you have any questions, do let me know in the link uh, in the comments below. And if you haven't tried Hike SEO yet, I highly encourage you to because it's a fantastic platform to allow small business owners, absolute beginners in SEO to optimize their websites for search engines so they can get more traffic, uh, more views on their site and more customers. And it does so in a very, very simple and action oriented way within the time that you have during the week. Even if you only have an hour or two, that's completely fine. You can incrementally improve your SEO over time. So check out Hike SEO and I will see you in the next video. Take care.